Ladies and gentlemen, TJ Productions proudly presents our interview with veteran artist and musician, Mr. Rick Steele. Okay, so welcome to the show. And thank you for coming uh, and being interviewed with us today. But uh, we've actually come to you, haven't we, Rick, today? Oh, well. We are very privileged to be here in your backyard, which no, is something of an icon, to be honest. Oh, no, well. I'm so impressed, it, or impressed as a Kiwi. It's been part thing. of a hobby to do as a musician. You must have another interest uh, gardening and turn up the backyard as part of the plan. And we're all quite creative, really, as musicians and singers. Well, that's good, because if you take your own time, you can uh, work on things and plan things. When you buy a new house, somebody, they buy a new house, you've got to, you've got to decide your backyard as the architect's drawing it up. You haven't got time. That's right. This has taken 20 years at my own leisure, you know. So that's what I do. Wow. I love it anyway. Um, um, I feel very privileged to be here today. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So there is two questions here. They kind of blend in together because one is telling telling us a bit about yourself. But how did you first get into music? What was your interest in getting you into music in the first place? Well, I grew up in the church. My dad was a preacher and my mother used to take the choir. And I quite enjoyed singing. Sometimes I'd sit in there near in the choir or something. Well, she was a conductor and everything. But I used to have singing at school. You know, a teacher would come in once and we said, we're going to do singing for an hour, and that was all right. We were, we were talking the late 50s, mid 50s. We were doing pretty funny sort of songs, but I remember my sister came home with blue suede shoes, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, go, let's go. So every week the teacher would say, does somebody want to get up and do a song, you know? I mean, it's a stupid story, really. No. But it's true. It's not. So I thought, I'll oh, shock them all. I don't know. My mother my mother used to say, give it a go. So anyway, one day he said, did anyone want to do a song? I said, yeah, sir, I'll do one. <laughs> so I did. I got up and did part of Blue Suede Shoes away. And of course, all the kids went. Elvis was pretty, was new. I mean, mm. really, it was, you know, it was in the papers. Conservative New Zealand. You know, Elvis was getting bagged left, right and centre as being, you know, vulgar and rude. Yeah, risque, and, wasn't he? Yeah, and my mother. That's why my mother said, I'll never buy you a guitar, you'll end up like that awful Elvis Presley. I mean, she, we listened to St Cambridge, St King's College Choir for St Cambridge, England. That's what we'd put on, she'd listen to, and organ music and stuff like that. So Elvis, when my sister bought the Elvis record, it was kind of like we pretty much hid it from her. We'd only play it when she wasn't home. But anyway, that's how I got started. So the kids went wild when I did Elvis, and that's that's it is. It's a drug. It's it's a bit of an addiction, really. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you know, three weeks later, it happened again, and this time I slicked my hair back, and they went more wilder. <laughs> <laughs> so I reckon that's probably what what happens and then eventually I did I mowed lawns my mother wouldn't buy me guitar she was a piano teacher uh, I bought my own guitar my brother had one so we sort of taught each other with no lessons I'm, I'm rambling now that's about it that's no, how that's it started. Great. and so I, I noticed with you talking just there that you were saying New Zealand is that where you originally are from New Zealand New Zealand yeah. New Zealand as they New say New and Zealand, whereabouts in New Zealand ditch, Auckland Oh, Auckland, okay. Um, and then more specific, Mount Eden, because yeah. my dad's church was up the road from the jail, Mount Eden's famous jail, a bit like Fremantle, built mm, about the same mm, time. Yes. So he was the he was the chaplain at Mount Eden Jail as well. And my mother and the choir used to go and sing in the jail every now and then. So wow. That, I never actually, I never did it. I was, by the time I was that sort of age, He'd, he'd retired, we'd left Mount Eden and he'd gone to the country, so... I've never been inside the jail. Been inside Fremantle. When my mother came over here at the age of about 80, she wanted to see Fremantle Jail because she'd been in Mount Eden Jail. Yes. Anyway, how did we get on to that? <laughs> this, this, this interview is getting... Being New Zealand, because oh, I, I mean, I used to live in Christchurch for oh, a few yeah. years, so oh, that's I know when Christchurch. you said that. And I'm, I'm sure when I said today, impressed as the Kiwis would say, you probably thought, what's she on about? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, but uh, when you say you bought, you could, so you got your guitar, your own guitar, yeah. um, you know, 
and what was the sort of music then that you were influenced by? Well, that was, I was about 11 then, and then 12 I went to boarding school, and that was, we're talking 61, that's when the Beatles came out, mm -hmm. so we mm -hmm. really, at church, we both had our guitars, when I was still at home, living at home, my brother and I, we were involved with the Bible class, so we were doing, that was when Peter, Paul and Mary were and sort of stuff like that, and we were doing Go Tell It on the Mountain, and you know, Negro spirituals mm, and things yes. like that. Churchy was church and folk. I mean, it was a blurry lines because there were Negro spirituals that we were doing and Swing Low, Sweet Chariot and things like that. And that developed into, I remember, uh, Blowing in the Wind came out, I think. Peter, Paul and Mary did that, I think. But they were deemed, Peter, Paul and Mary were deemed as being sort of reasonably respectable sort of thing. You could... Folk music was coming through, and it's skiffle. I remember we we used to get Lonnie Donegan in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I remember I learnt my old man's a dustman at a very early yes. age, and I, I still remember that. I still do that on river cruises and it's parties great, or something. Yeah. And the other one that went with it, my old man's a dustman, and the other one was oh, I don't know. My dad loved Tiny Tim, tiptoe through the tulips. Uh, he used to love pretending to play that one. <laughs> I. I thankfully avoided that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's one of, been one of your greatest successes with um, getting yourself into music and playing the guitar and what's something that you can recall that uh, it's probably a lot of stuff really isn't it for you? Yeah well I like there's lots of different experiences I mean I've been lucky enough to, to yeah, I probably the most recent one I got to I toured with my son in America and I played in Vegas in front of a bit well, there weren't 5,000 when I played, there was probably only a couple of thousand, but we were still on the big stage in, yeah, wow. in Vegas. And then we went to Reno, and then we went to Phoenix, Arizona, all 5,000 seaters. But with him coming on, he came on and joined me. But he introduced me every night, and he, when, they, when he walked on, of course, he was the star, and he said, oh, I'd be They'd be dressing me, putting my guitar on on stage and plugging me and getting it ready. And he'd say, oh, well, we found this guy out in the street and he, he reckons he can play and uh, we're going to give him a go if that's all right. Are you all right? And the audience, they're looking at Luke and that. So then he said, no, it's my papa from Australia. <laughs> and and the, they all went, they all cheered and everything. So that was the introduction. And then I did about three or four songs and then it, I said... Uh, I was a bloke out the back here, reckons he can play a bit, so I reckon we should give him a go, don't you reckon? And then Luke walked out, so we did it in reverse. Wow. And we did three songs together. And what what sort of songs did you play for them? Well, actually it was a, it was a good choice, because uh, Chuck Berry had just died. Mm. So this is about three years ago yeah, again now, or something. Ago. So I did Memphis, Tennessee, and I guess, uh, I think, uh, uh, I did a Dylan song. And, uh, What's your favourite Dylan song? Oh, there's no such thing, really. The I don't think. There's quite a lot of them. Yeah, no, that's a bit hard to. So I did the uh, Dylan song, and then now we, oh, JJ Cale, we did a mm -hmm. song called Clyde, which Clyde, yeah. Luke cut sick on, and I think we finished with that because I, I did a harmonic. I did my own version of everything anyway. So, and we did Unchain My Heart, which is, which is a good. So Ray Charles, I think, Charles, might have died as well. Or anyway, mm -hmm. I, I just sort of, because Luke's crowd is kind of covers the board as well. It's not all teenagers. It's it's a lot of his fans are in their thirties, forties, whatever. So yeah, and I did a couple of my own songs, I think. But if you stick to Dylan, Ray Charles, and Chuck Berry, and whatever, you you can't go wrong, really, can you? Because that's what you call yeah, your music. No, well, it's not like today, is it? The camera crews and the people that were sort of doing it in the backstage, or because they were all they sort it. of a bit older than me, you know. Yeah, so that 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 was that was pretty good. And going on the on the tour bus, which was Dolly Parton's old tour bus, I think. But so you know, you're doing the big. You, you live in the sort of the, yeah, what you see the in the movies. Mm. So that was all right. And how long were you there for uh, when you went over? It? Uh, we were there for, he was playing Coachella, so I, I, I got to go to Coachella, the biggest festival in the world, sort of thing as well. Mm. 
we were there for about four weeks, but the actual little tour part was about a week, I think. Then they went back and finished in Vegas. No, in LA, sorry, but I didn't play in LA because Jake did, my other son was there. Jake opened in LA. <laughs> wow. So it's a family affair sort of thing, which is, if Luke, once this pandemic's over, you know, we might, he might come back and do something in Australia, and we've talked about that. Yeah. How many kids have you got, Rick? I've got five all together. Do you know television in your house at the time? <laughs> no, I started young. Started young. Started young. Yeah. And we had twins, of course, because Jake yes. and Katie are twins. But yes. Yeah. And um, are they all into music themselves? Yeah, pretty much in different day? ways, yeah. yeah so, hey, a... your daughter's little birdie, is that right? Well, uh, not anymore. That was... That was five years ago, six mm. years ago, so she's she's just Katie Steele now. Yeah, she put some great stuff out and still going, yeah. Yeah, she Fabulous. did okay. So, yeah, no, the little birdie was her band, but that's yes. disbanded probably eight years ago now. So, might even be... So, yeah, she's doing her own. Mm. Yeah, that's great to, it's great to but see I she's following your footsteps. I opened for her last year at the quarry, so I did, I did support act for her as well. So. Fabulous. They'll keep me in business for a while. Yeah. <laughs> now to miss you. <laughs> yeah. What's your greatest weakness uh, when it comes to all of this? Because there is, isn't there? There's, you've got your highs and there's a bit of lows along the way, isn't there? Weaknesses? I don't have any weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble and perfect in <laughs> every way. Uh, I don't know. I oh, probably... It's... it's Focusing, you know, like for, for songwriting is some people write, you know, two in a day or whatever. It takes take, takes me a long time, but I deal with serious subjects. Normally, uh, would take quite a while, wouldn't it, when it's a serious subject? Yeah, well, I often revisit, but like well, a, a weakness. Uh, I don't know. Weakness could be the women falling all over you, Rick. Uh, yeah, all my groupies are over 65 now. Yeah. They've all got walking sticks that, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose finishing things is probably it. I've, it's hard. Just 23, I love my wood and I love mucking around and everything. But it's hard to finish things because I think the pace has quickened up in life. You know, even uh, even if you're getting older, you're still, if, you, if, if you're doing things, which I kind of tend to do. Mm, mm. It's hard to f hard to finish one thing. You sort of there's maintenance on the house for a start off. You know. So there's a bit of everything going on, really, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, and I've always done that Life myself. Life in general, too, on top. Mm. Until I had uh, leg problems and knees problems. You know, I was up the ladder on the roof. I used to do the gutters every year. That, well, that sort of thing. Is that a weakness doing the gutters? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's a failing now, anyway. Yeah, I reckon, answer that question in two words. Finishing things. Finishing things, things yeah. yeah. Creative people can be a bit like that anyway, can't they, really? Well, that's we right. Start one thing and then we get sidetracked a little, don't we? Yeah, and interesting people, because the more people you know and the more circles you move in. Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been involved with the Vietnam veterans for a few years. I wasn't one, I missed out by a day. Which was good. They probably wouldn't have taken me because I was blind anyway. But mm. uh, yeah, that's that's been a bit of a bit like sliding doors a little back then, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, one of the songs I'm working on now is the lyrics were given me to me by a Vietnam veteran who has since taken his life, and uh, mm. it's sort of sat there. I don't know how to deal with it for ages. But the other night I. I thought, it's time to do it, I want to do it. There was another motivation for that as well that came from another field. So I'm sort of dealing with that now. I got it got started now. Yeah, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing because I think mental, men's mental health as well on top, you know. Yeah. Back in the, the Aussie days of, you know, the 60s and 70s, most men were told to suck it up princess. Well, they, that's right. Know? With no feelings and yeah, no yeah. human at the end of the day, aren't we? Well, that's right. So that's that's kind of why I always had empathy empathy for the 
Vietnam veterans and when they came nice. home that was enough. Uh, I was very grateful I didn't have to go and one of my best friends is a Vietnam veteran. We, but just through things we got drawn together and we do a big Anzac show every year at Canning now. Uh, you know, with a full band, a 15 piece show and all that sort of thing. And it's fabulous. We, of course, this year was different because it all got canned. Mm -hmm. But I, we're starting to plan it. I was going to do Who He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother this year. That was going to be my. Yeah, yeah, well, it's a tricky song to handle, but I'll give it a go. Yeah, it's a hard one to get through, too, with the words and everything. It's a. Yeah. One straight to the heart, isn't it? How know? do we get onto that? It's always a good thing, Rick. You know, it's always a good thing because I think creative people, um, we tend to have that sort of different. We, we see the world differently, don't we? So we can have our very highs and our very lows, and it's, it's, it seems uh, to be a part of a lot of the entertainment people, isn't it? You know? Well, that's the good thing about sort of gardening and stuff. You, ne you need that yeah, hobby, you need something to take you away because music can be all consuming, you know, and that's right. you don't want to. That, relates to what we were saying before about not finishing things in a way. I mean, this is still not finished. I'm, you can always something improve, you know. And There's always something to do. It's always something to do. That's and right. is this your other talent as well, on top of um, the performing side of things and and playing? Is, is there other little talents there hidden uh, that you don't, you don't at, know about? Or? I'm good at cleaning bricks. <laughs> I reckon I clean it's it. not an easy thing to clean bricks, actually. No, actually I've there helped is. a friend do that once. There's a certain skill to it, for sure. Yep. You know, it uh, depends how hard, what what the brickie was like and how much concrete and how hard it was. Some are, some are near impossible to clean. The concrete's just too hard. But I've cleaned a few over the years, put it that way. If you could have anyone around the table now with you that you've looked up to in the past, uh, mm. who would that be? Uh, you allowed to say my father or something? Yeah, I wouldn't of course mind you chatting can. him. <laughs> Your dad? Uh, yeah. Oh, he didn't. Talk a lot. He was a kind of well, the silent the type. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was busy. I mean, in those days, I suppose I don't know what. I guess priests have the similar role, but we lived in Mount Eden, as I said before. But mm -hmm. We had Mount Eden Village, which you know, we're talking about the fifties and the sixties was. Mm. He he knew. Well, part of his job was visiting. So we'd go down to Mount Eden Village, I'd go down with him, we'd stop and he'd talk to a little old lady and whatever. You know, they'd drive me nuts as a nine-year-old, they'd want to give you a little kiss or something. <laughs> go away. <laughs> well, it was kind of, when you look back on it and see his role and it, we'd be at breakfast table or the dinner table. And I, I remember conversations with, after he'd go visiting in jail. and There was a, actually they made a movie about her Kate Winslet was in it, Juliet Hume, who killed her friends, hit her with a brick on the head, and Juliet was in, Juliet was one, Juliet Hume was her real name, she's an author now, lives in Scotland, she's famous, which I can't remember her name now. That's her, the dressmaker, was it? No. No, no. it was... What's it called? I know it's a, uh, Kate. Kate Winslet was in it, yes, and it was, it, yes. was, it was in Christchurch, it was, it was in... Christchurch, where the murder took happen, happened, and uh, yeah. Anyway, he's going. I'm going to now, Rick. I'll yeah. have to go and look for it. <laughs> oh, I've, I've got a, stories on it, and I'm. Mm. There, but anyway, he took. He'd go and visit her because she was 18 or something. Here, she is in Mount Eden Jail at 18 year old. She was the youngest mm. person to ever go to jail for wow. murder in New Zealand or something. But I, I remember. Him going, man, it was Juliet today. Oh, she was pretty quiet, but she seemed quite good. And they'd have conversation like this around the yes, dinner yes. table, breakfast table. And interesting life. You, yeah, is there something you would ask your dad if you if he came back today and was sitting around here? What question would you <laughs> ask him? There's probably many, isn't it? But yeah, that's too what hard. Comes too hard. Yeah, put a cross by that one. <laughs> <laughs> there you and go. your mum? Would you have your mum back around oh, as well? Oh, well. She was a disciplinarian down in my mm. room, down the back, my sort of. I call it the dungeon because it's underground, but uh, I've got the wooden spoon on the wall. Well, I've got a copy of the, it's a wooden spoon from here, but she was a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. If you got out of line, you get a whack on the leg with the wooden spoon, so. Sounds like my mum. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, I suppose, in a way, haven't they? Not that I was a naughty child. No. <laughs> uh, 
Not that I've been a naughty boy, really. I've tried to walk on the straight and narrow. And do you have faith, Rick? Do you, you believe with the, the, you know, well, the past I, of being... Well, yes, I think this mm. is... Yeah, you got to... Yeah. I mean, I, I believe in the straight and narrow, and I believe in, mm. you know, that... It was on Facebook the other day, someone was crying about something. Oh, the moral compass and whatever. I, was, I, just, I just wrote Jesus, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, the, if, you, if you sort of try and follow in that sort of way and be nice to people, be kind to people, mm. the, 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 the Ten Commandments are a pretty good guide as well, really. They are, they are. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, they're there to teach us, really, aren't they? We can make a mistake, but then we can look back and go, oh. Yeah, well, you know. No, oh, I had too many beers last night, and I shouldn't <laughs> have said that to the preacher's wife. Oh, <laughs> I've woken up a few times and thought, oh, did I do that? Oh, I had. Uh, yes, that's what it says. You're allowed to make the odd mistake, and if you're sorry about it. And, I mean, I did it. We. Well, I lived at home until I was about 17, 18, I think, when I left high school, boarding school. I was at boarding school, came home. If I was at home, you had to go to church on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. 8 o'clock, no matter what time you got home. I got home at half past 3, 4 o'clock. Oh, boy. <laughs> My dad had still come on at half past 7 and say, right, church in half an hour, you've got half an hour. You have to Listerine to try and wash some of the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you weren't sitting next to Mrs. Jones and <laughs> breathe all over her. <laughs> wow. Yes. So when you, you when did you leave New Zealand and come to Australia? What uh, what, what age were you about there? And had was, you met your wife there to be? Or no, I, no. I was twenty three when I left. When I got to Perth, yeah. So you came straight to Perth, like. Well, I had a bit of time in Melbourne. My brother was living in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with him for a while and I actually tossed a coin. I was going to maybe go to the Gold Coast or Sydney because mm -hmm. the cabaret scene was good. I mean, we were really a cabaret act then in those days. And I could do a Neil Diamond song and I used to do a Roger Miller impersonation. And I, I could string a show together, mm -hmm. right? I'd been on a lot of TV shows in New Zealand mm -hmm. and everything. And, but uh, it came down Perth and I, I kind of... I, I knew a guy called Bob Kunis who was a fast bowler for New Zealand and he got his jaw broken on the whacker here by Graham McKenzie. This is before helmets. This is 19... Well, I was still teaching in New Zealand. I was a school teacher in my first life and wow. I was teaching in Auckland and we used to, after school on Friday we'd go down to the pub in Mount Wellington have a few beers on a Friday afternoon and Bob came back from Perth and he had his jaw wired up. In those days, the broken jaw, they somehow they used to wire it up. So it's a, so he's drinking through a straw. And I said, hey, well, what about this Perth? And he said, oh, I don't know. Bro. And he said, oh, the girls are beautiful. The beaches are great. The weather's great. You know, and he said, yeah, and that kind of way. stuck in my head. And that's, yeah, I, I remember as a kid going to Tauranga and thinking Tauranga felt like a holiday place. And when I got off the train at Perth, and it was April the 1st, 1971, and I got off the train. Well, they had to wake me up. I was still asleep. Everybody got off the train. And they wake me up. And I looked up, and the sky was blue. Not a not a cloud in the mm, sky. And I thought this place feels all right already, you know. And I had a private hotel booked in A Street, so I got to that, and yeah, it just felt good from the start, mm. you know. So I never regret coming here. I mean, I've always said to people, this is like California was a hundred years ago. This place is going to be jumping in another 20 years, I reckon. It's, it's kind of jumping now, but... It is, yeah. yeah. I reckon when, when they get a few transport things sorted and uh, get the old Norwest opens up as it is right, and yeah. Caratha and all... I mean, I've been all of those places. I've been... You, 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 you would uh, sing that song really well, I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've been yeah. everywhere. Well, I kind of wrote my own. I've written, a, I've written a few of my own. That's correct, yeah. I've got a song about the trip to Port Edlin and you know, Kalgoorlie and things like that. Hopefully we'll be able to get that one off you and have a little listen, that'd be great. Yes. Got to hear some of your stuff, Rick. You yeah, can't hide well, it I'll, away from us. Yeah, well, I'll just try to think. I guess I can lend you a CD. Or, that'd be amazing. Because Paul Kelly ended up singing the backing vocals on it. Brilliant. Kay, Katie had been touring with 
Paul Kelly, and he just happened, it was his last night in town, and they all said, what are we going to do the last night in Perth? And everyone was going off, and Katie rang up, it was it was August and it was cold, she said, have you got any firewood? And I said, yeah, yeah. She said, I've just invited the crew from the Paul Kelly tour, right? and they're all coming. <laughs> so, Brilliant. So we had a night around the fire, actually, I think we sort of wrote a, we tried writing a song together, me and Paul Kelly and Luke and that, but I think it's gone into oblivion. It was, it was one of those sort of nights. But well, why did I mention that? Oh yeah, he, yeah. Well, he ended up. We had the tape recorder here, and though I was, my album was. There was no backing vocals, and Katie said, "Who have you got singing backing on this?" And I said, "Well, I was just going to get the band." Katie, being cheeky little whatever the hell she was, <laughs> said, "PK, come have a listen to this." And the next minute, Luke's got his tape machine out, and so yeah, he's on. He's on my. He's on my record. Fabulous. That's that's a song called. It's called the Nullarbor Dust is Dirty. Nullarbor Dust is Dirty. I love it. Like, like some people in rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. Sounds great, Rick. I would love to hear that. It'd be uh, amazing. I'll try and sort it out for you. I still do it live. Fun. We do it. Yep. We. Yeah. Have you got anything uh, coming up in, in the near future? Like you know, I know with this um, sort yeah. of problems we've had recently with everything going on in the world, but is there something coming up in the? Well, near I'm future? just doing festivals now. I, mm. Last year I organised Perth's first international blues festival which was going to be in North Perth and the mm -hmm. Rose Mountain, the Charles and add in the, they call it the Common which is like a piazza in North Perth. Mm -hmm. I had several meetings with the Italian consulate and we were flying this guy over from Italy. Of course it all went down the gurgler mm -hmm. very quickly and I had Eugene Highway Bridges was, cut, was from Texas. He comes over every year, mm -hmm. has done for the last 20 years. So we had, we had this international, six international acts. Wow. So we're doing a scale down version of that. That's in March. But there's a couple of festivals that I've sort of been invited on, which that's all I'm going to do now. I've retired from doing solo duo work. I, I just, just do one here and there when I feel like it now, because um, I'm tired. Yeah. What's your favourite place that you've ever performed at? What's, the, what's your favourite <laughs> place you've ever performed at? Oh, that's, too many? That's, hard question? That's too hard as well, yeah, in a way. I mean, look, I've been to Switzerland three times and I've played up in the Alps and that, that comes to mind is, is somewhere, you know, like, because it's, it's so different. And when I got there, my friend took me over and they said, oh, this is the Aussie singer. And, they, you know, they're all looking at you, these big burly Swiss mount, mountain men. I mean, we're up, we're up that high that only above where the pub was, the goat herders live or the guys that look after the cows. So, uh, Wow. If you could relive your life again or is there any changes you would make? <laughs> I'll make this the last question for you, Rick. <laughs> if there was, would, oh, look, would, would you live it exactly the same or would there be something slightly different you would do? I'd probably work a bit harder. <laughs> probably be more diligent in my approach. Oh, but I off. enjoyed life, you know, I mean, yeah. that's the thing. I that's always it. enjoyed a beer. When we had our rehearsals in New Zealand, it was, there was always a few beers there. And in those days, God's, God's herb was around. And we, you know, we, we, had, we were always having fun. Mm. I think now when I look at my kids and what they did, they were much more disciplined. But whether I'd change that or not, I don't know. I mean, I had an opportunity to tour the world when I was... But my kids were at high school and I agonised over that. I'd go away for three months and tour the world and I was going to go right mm -hmm. through Canada on a trip and then a couple of dates in the States and that. I hear you're a bit of an actor though as well because you, you're writing a column at the moment, aren't you? Uh, and there was a photo that I saw <laughs> and there you are and you were the legs of the horse or something, well, is that I right? I guess you were well informed, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, oh, so what, well, a little bit about that, just about that column, Rick, uh, uh, you know, what got you into well, writing? And uh, well, when I came back from New Zealand in 1980, Liz was like, distributing a, it was a magazine called Girl About Town, or Julie Silko was the editor, I think Julie went on to be editor of famous magazine over east, I can't remember, you know, one national magazine, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. 
Julie and I just kind of met and I said, oh, yeah, I could write a story. It was called Pub Crawl and I used to go out and do this, interview somebody mm. about their band and who's in the band, one of those sort of things. Mm, mm, mm. So that's sort of, and then I met Jen Merrigan from the Have A Go paper. She came up at the Blues Pub one night and I said, oh, I used to write a story when I used to, I used to think I was funny, you know, or whatever. And I said, you know, I, if I was going to do something, I'd like to try and make it slightly humorous, you know, just... That's that's probably one of my things. You know, the people on Facebook get so serious all the time. I, do. I just lighten I up, lads. You know, I guess, I guess I've been lucky like that. I haven't had to be a checkout chick or, you know, work some humdrum job, you know. So You've I got can, to do what you love and have to take your breaks when you take them. And, yeah, well, that's and right. enjoy I, life along the way, isn't it? That's what it's all about. I said I was a school teacher for five years and, yes. then I, and I did music in a school over here. I taught over here for a couple of years, but yeah, that oh, that's a long time ago. Mm. So, yeah, I've been lucky enough to have a job that I like doing, so... And that's what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Having yeah. a sense of humour is pretty important, but when you're doing one of those jobs, I mean, I like... Last time we had to go to hospital, not for me, mm. for my wife, and we were in the Royal Perth, and you see what those people go through, and mm. and what police go through, and oh boy, stressful, isn't it? How do they cope? How do you go back to how do you go back to work the next day when you go through one of those? I'll tell you how. Some music you write, and they sit and listen to it, yeah. and that's what gets them up I again. I think they go back to work because they need the money to pay yeah. the rent, <laughs> and that's not easy these days. It's not, no. But I think music helps a lot of people. Oh, for it's, sure. It's well, very much a healer and oh, it's very yeah. therapeutic. That's isn't John it? Lee Hooker. You're quoting mm -hmm. John Lee Hooker there. Music's a healer, and that's there's right. absolutely no doubt about that. Because one of the girls that was in Luke's band, that's well, I started out going around when I was 12 years old. When mm -hmm. we through the through the church, we used to go and sing to people in the hospital. Well, I would have thought that my singing in those days probably made them sicker, more sicker. But, but. Yeah, there's no doubt about it that music is, is, is a healer. Yes. Yeah, and then John Lee Hooker said it, and it's true. I mean, how, Very much so. how the blues came from. Go and walk 16 hour days in the cotton fields picking cotton. I mean, oh, come on. Amazing. You're know, either going to make you throw up or want to sing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or both. And I think it's got a lot of people through, hasn't it, really? Yeah. Even um, the mental stimulation that music gives us, whether we write or sing it or listen to it you yeah know, so of all sort of uh styles and, yeah, yeah. and genres but yeah i know. like listening to tchaikovsky and um mm. Vivaldi and every now and then i like it out here in the garden if i'm gardening sometimes but a classical music's good it's beautiful isn't it yeah uh, well it's good to uh, look thanks so much today rick for geez. inviting us here to this beautiful abode and, well, and l I've allowing myself jay and and um Oh. Uh, Tim there to, to come and sit Well, I don't know what it's chat. going to be good for. Who's going to I mean, I had all of these questions, but at the end of the day, I think... Um, well, I you waffle know, so much. See, it's yeah. great. No, it wasn't waffling. This is what we love because <laughs> people tell us then and they tell us a lot of things that we would probably have never asked or got out of them. So that's well, a good thing. <laughs> depends whether, whether it's interesting or whether it's boring. That's the problem. It's not boring. How, how's your health? Now, what's going to happen with that? Is there anything... Well, I've got, up on the rise I'm trying to cut down on my sugar. That's all. The sugar, the sugar? is the sugar is the killer. That's for everybody apparently. Mm. That's what all the doctors things, tell me. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to do. I mean, at that stage, I mean, watermelon and rock melon and grapes mm. and that. I mean, I could, I could, I was. When Liz went to America, I was gorging myself. And uh, so when I went to the doctor, he said, "Oh, oh. sugar levels, yeah." <laughs> I said, "But I thought fruit's good for you, you know. An apple a day keeps it there, yeah, but." If you watermelon right, and a, rock, yeah. rock, a lot of sugar, apparently, yeah, yeah. so yeah, I have you've to, got to be careful. Yeah, I've got to take everything in moderation. It's like everything in life; you should do it in moderation. In moderation. So, and that's exactly what God taught us, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, He turned the water into wine. Come on, <laughs> nice one, Jesus. <laughs> he did. Classic. Anyway, cheers, Rick. Yeah, yeah, that's good on you. Nice Your coffee you. and the water. Wonderful. I, um, it's a privilege to be sitting here talking to you. Good so luck thanks to you. very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs>
When the sun goes down And the darkness brings the closing of the day Light your light of remembrance So that others will surely know the way We will remember you Straight.